So the first step is to go down a couple inches from the top of your paper and make this nice curved line and then curve it down on each side. So it's almost like a half circle. But then you're going to bring the line down a little bit further down, kind of going inward toward the middle. So you get kind of like a strawberry shape or a teardrop shape. Next, you're going to draw a rounded box to make the basket. After that, you're going to connect the corners of the basket back up to the bottom part of the strawberry. Here, I'm kind of rounding it out to make sure that it's symmetrical so it looks the same on both sides. I'm going to try this one more time just so I can give myself more room at the bottom. It's totally fine if you need to practice this more than one time. So step one again is to draw that curved line and then bring your pencil down and inward toward the middle. So you're kind of making a teardrop shape, almost like a balloon shape. Okay, and I didn't want it to be too low, so I drew this line here to show where the top of my basket should go. But then I decided, you know what, I think I'm going to make the basket a little bit bigger. And some of the baskets are really big and wide, and they're actually wider than the base of the balloon. So the strings, instead of going inward, go outward. So this is the shape you want to create to get your first outline of your hot air balloon. Okay, so I'm going to do it one more time just to try to make the top a little bit more rounded make it fit on my paper a little bit better. So now I decided to sharpie the outlines so that I can erase any of those lines that I don't want to keep because the next thing I need to do, it needs to be a little bit cleaned up. So I'm going to sharpie all the outlines so far and then I'm going to continue drawing. So starting in the middle of your paper, you're going to draw a line straight down from top to bottom, and then you're going to start curving the lines outward in the direction of the side that it's going. So if following the curve of the outside edge, you're going to make it a little bit more curved and a little bit more curved until you get to the last curve, which is the outside line. So watch how I do it on the left side. I'm going to curve just a little bit out toward the left. I'm going to curve a little bit more out toward the left. Oops. Redo. And then one more going out even more, which is going to give it the illusion of contour. And contour is how things look three-dimensional or rounded out. Now I'm going to erase a little bit of the bottom to give it that kind of base. There's usually a large piece at the bottom that's curved, it goes around, that's a different solid color. So it's sewn kind of more across. So I want to make that piece. So on this next part, I'm going to draw a curved line coming down and going back up again so that I know where to put my little scalloped edges. The scalloped line is showing how each of those sections of the balloon come outward, kind of like on a pumpkin. And so when I go to do my stripe, you're still going to be able to see the contour of the balloon in each of its panels. Next, I decided to do mine overlooking some mountains and it has some clouds that are lit by the moonlight and I'm going to have a moon and a star so I'm going to draw the mountains, the clouds, and the moon and stars first with my pencil and then I'm going to sharpie everything in before I start adding anything for color. Now that everything is sharpied, I'm going to go ahead and erase all of my stray pencil marks and my pencil marks so that when I go back and add my colors, it's nice and clean. So for this next part, I used oil pastel. You can use crayon if you want to do a wax resist like I am. But I used oil pastel to color in all my white areas and to do my mountains. So I colored in all the stars, the moon, and the clouds. And then I used colors to do my mountains to show where the moon is hitting them. I also colored in my people and my basket. Now I'm going to use watercolors so that I can paint around the background of the hot air balloon first. 
and then paint in all the other parts of my hot air balloon with color. So now I decided to paint all of the background with black watercolor. So I used lots of paint and lots of water to try to keep it nice and even and really, really, really dark. So I mixed my paint into the water a lot. There's a lot of paint. I then go over it with a light um, purple color of oil pastel just to give outlines to all of my white shapes and add some dimension and shadow. And then when I paint the hot air balloon, I just decided to do any colors. I did red, orange, and yellow, so warm colors, contrast the background, makes it really stand out and pop. But also, I went down where the lines are going down with one shade darker on each one just to give it a little bit of shadow in between where those little sections of the hot air balloon would go. So if you look carefully, you may notice those little sections just like that. So there you have it, my finished hot air balloon painting. I have my background that really contrasts or is different from my hot air balloon. So the dark sky really showcases the bright colors of the hot air balloon. And you can see the details. I've got the clouds and the stars, the moon, and I've got those mountains with the moon shining on them in the background. So there is a landscape. There are details in the background. I want you guys to be creative, think of what you want your background to look like, and then get started.